Good morning, friend, friends. New project today, and, uh, and another quite uh, fascinating story behind this one. Um, some of you may have seen my classic vibe Telecaster video I did a couple of years ago on uh, a guitar was bought to me uh, by a guy who was told he'd taken it to another luthier or another guitar tech or whatever. So, 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 so not too far from here, only five six miles from here, with fretboards. And anyway, he took it and he got it back, and the guitar still had fretboards, so he took it back. And the bloke did it again, and he still had fretboards again. So this guitar tech gave the owner some bright cock and ball saying, oh, you'll never get rid of fretboards on a Telecaster and all this. I thought, what well, absolute twaddle. Anyway, he bought it to me, and I sorted it out. And that video, the classic vibe, Squire, classic vibe Telecaster video, the buyer told you will never get rid of fretboards or whatever. It's one of my top, it was my top video on my channel. He's had something like 40,000 views or something. And it brings me loads and loads of work because this one is because of that video. I've got a uh, guy, well actually no, not just that video, there's another video I did as well where a guy just up the road here taking his guitar to a shop only a mile away from here and it, it was in and out of that shop six times and he says every time I still come back with fretboards he bought it to me and I sorted it in ten minutes and that is a guitar he wanted tuning down to drop B. Well, so let me explain about this one and before I explain about this one I'm going to show you the guitar and I'm going to tell you the story behind the guitar. Obviously the owner of this guitar has seen one or two of those videos because he saw it reasonable enough or deemed it reasonable enough to drive all the way down from Merseyside to Nottingham to bring his guitar for me to, or to me for me to work on it and that's just absolutely fantastic and it's not the only one and quite a few people drive a good distance or they post a guitar to me and that's, that's just fantastic I'm really so grateful of that but anyway here is the guitar and it's a limited ESP TE200, great looking guitar, and he wants it tuning to drop B, but he says he's getting buzz everywhere. Now you see, with a dancing guitar and you're using the strings, I says, listen, it's not fretboards you're getting, right, it is, it is a ringing, it, it is, uh, it's not really buzz as such. The reason is, the strings you're using are, are fat strings. And the action is too low and your neck is not set right and you're not getting fretboards as much as just a vibration on the lower notes and that's because your strings too fat now you've got to understand the guitar string doesn't just vibrate left and right it vibrates up and down left and right and every angle possible and your big areas of vibration are along here but when you consider you have got your string only crikey a quarter of a millimetre above the first fret. When you boing that string, it's going like that, and it's going to hit these frets. And what you've got to do is, you, it's a down tuning. It is a you have to make a compromise. It is a balancing act, and it's a balancing act between string gauge, string tension, the pull of the neck. Uh, consider, for instance, it's like a cantilever system. Is your neck straight? You put some strings on it, you tighten them strings to tune, that neck is going to go, it's going to pull up. So what you do is you alter the truss rod to push the neck back. So now you've got six strings pulling in that direction on the headstock. Easy way to explain it is here. I've got strings on, I tighten all these strings, blah, 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 blah. As soon as I tighten these strings, that neck is going to want to bend up. So we tighten the truss rod at the end to bend that neck back from that position, back, straighten it. And that is the balancing act, it's a compromise. Now. When you put in something else, like you put in a much thicker string in there, you've got to make alterations to the knot, to the neck itself without a relief, and to the bridge area, the height of the saddles. You see, because it is a balancing act. Now, when you put in a fatter string on there, for starters, and you're going to have the strings a little bit looser, you've got to alter the neck and you've got to alter the bridge also. But the thing is, when you're plucking a fatter string, it's going to vibrate a lot more. It's going to hit the strings. You can have fretboards on a down tune guitar even when you, you have no high frets. Now, I've already been across the fretboard on this and there are two or three high frets. But that, I don't think, is causing the problems he's having down here. You are not. When you're down tuning to B and you're playing deep heavy music, right, your guitar is not set up for clean. It's set up for distortion, heavy distortion normally. Think Jim Roo, think Slipknot. You want to be playing clean sounds, you're going to be looking at basically a different guitar. If you want to play clean sounds on one of these, we can set it up so you can play clean sounds and you, you, you're you going to be 99% buzz free. But you've got to expect when you're playing with a fatter string, you're not really set up for cleans. And if you are playing cleans, I would say avoid playing 
the low E string or the C string because that is where you're going to get a vibration. Now, we can still set this so we don't get vibration and one thing I've suggested to the owner is we go with a slightly lighter string. He said, he actually did say to me, he says, look, I'll go with your recommendation, whatever you think. It's not a drove, but it's always way for nothing. So I said, what I would do is, he was using strings 12 sixties. Your low E string's like a clutch cable. And has it not been cut accordingly to fit the string? Looks like it actually has. And I'm sure we can get a decent setup with it. I actually did set this at guitar while he was here. And we got a good setup. And we did get a buzz free setup, but he still wasn't happy. There was a little tiny bit of ringing on the low E around frets two and three. I says, you ask him for the impossible, mate. Unless you want your action three millimeters at 12 fret, you ain't going to get rid of that. Which is a shame, but we could try a lighter string. And I am going to go with a lighter string. And what I'm going to do is, when I set the radius on the bridge, which is going to basically arc to match the radius of the fingerboard, I'm going to go just a little bit higher on that one low E string. It's what I do when I do a down tune guitar. But all the other strings will be matching the radius where the low E, say this is a low E side, I'll just bring that up just a little bit just to stop that ringing, which should help with the problem. Do I think we're going to absolutely, totally, 100% eliminate any little bit of rattle when you're playing the down tuned? When you're playing down tuned stuff and you're hammering them strings, like I do, how much is boards and how much is a rattle? You know, when you're playing this sort of sound, you're not going to wait through the amp anyway, but the thing is, it's got to be a balancing act. And if you want a low action and you want to play down tuned drop B uh, with a 60 string, you ain't going to get rid of buzz. One, I cannot guarantee 100% you are going to get rid of buzz unless we have the action stupidly high. Now we don't want a high action. I would not want to go more than two and a quarter millimeters above the 12th fret on the low E string. If, if, and even if possible, the highest I'd like to be going would be around about two millimeters. I think we can achieve this with a lighter gauge string. So I've recommended we go with a 1254 set. I play drop A sharp or drop B flat with these strings. And they're absolutely fine. And I've, and I've been playing with that those these strings for years uh, at that tuning. Drop B should not be should be a problem with 1254s. Don't believe all this hype that you need to drop down to a, a 70 string or whatever. Absolute rubbish. You need to drop down a gauge a string gauge every half a step or whatever. You can quite easily play 1254s and drop B. And everything to feel right. In fact, I know quite a lot of top players use a 1254 set because they all get the same problem with the 60 string. They vibrate too much and they hit the refresh and you need a higher action. So I'm going to go for what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to set the guitar up with these old strings on. To my recommendation, I'm going to set the radius on the saddles. I'm going to set the neck how I want it, just a small bit of relief, nothing major. Um, I will go. I'd like to think I will go with round about half a mil relief, round about ninth fret. Maybe not as much as that. I'll check. I don't know what that are. That is in umps of inches. We don't use umps of inches over here in England, uh, and most of the world don't. You go and measure. See, try and find a video where they measure the relief in a neck. It's always in uh, an umps of an inch. We don't use inches here. We're all metric. We all moved on years ago. It's only America and probably one or two other countries in the world don't use a metric system. So why do we go by their measurements? America's not the bloody be all and end all on, it, on the earth, is it? But anyway, just saying that, just a bugbear there for me. Just getting that off my chest. You know what I mean? It's early in the morning. Uh, but today is going to be a good day. I will also look for a switch tip. If I've got one knocking about my draw, stick that on there. Check all the electrics, make sure the pots are all right. So this is having the intensive setup. It does not need fret work. As far as I know, it doesn't need electrical work. So it's going to be standard intensive setup price, which the guy's chuffed about because I quoted him 110 quid online and he's going 45, 35 quid less than that. So he's up there, it's Larry. He's coming to pick this up Friday night. It's now Wednesday morning, very early. I don't normally work Wednesdays. Wednesday's normally my day off, but uh, I'm working today. Um, so I will crack on, get it set up, see where we are, and I'll come back with an update shortly. Right, you can't see too much of me because uh, I've changed the camera angle just a bit, just for the purposes of this little bit of video. Now, what I've done is, I've done nothing to this guitar other than set it up how I think it should be set up. I've tweaked the truss rod. <coughs> I've altered the action, slight, very, very slightly. Um, I will have, let's just bear with me one second to 
stick that on there. I'm going to measure the height of the low E string above the 12th fret. The first four strings are all set up exactly as they should according to the radius of a bridge, but the last string, or the low E string, I've set just that little bit higher. I have an action of 2.25 millimeters here, and I tuned it to drop B. No buzz there, nah. Can you hear something there? A little rattle. Now and again. That's not buzz, that's rattle. You're gonna get a rattle because the strings are vibrating a lot. That's why I recommend going with slightly lighter string. No string balls here. That's it, that is perfectly set up. speaker vibrating because I've got it quite loud, it's a bass up actually. It is all about the setup and getting the balancing act right. What I'm going to do now is remove the strings completely, I'm going to straighten this neck, I'm going to check the neck for fret buzz. Uh, not fret most fret, uh, any high frets, if we have some high frets I'll sort those out and then I'm going to give this guitar a complete setup. I'm going to put a lighter gauge string on there so I'll have to alter the truss rod just a little because there'll be less pull on the strings. You've got to understand when your strings are tied to concert pitch you are pulling on the neck up to about 70 kilograms in tension and you have to counteract that with a truss rod. 70 kilograms, that's these strings, the tension on these strings when it's tuned to pitch. So we have to counterbalance that by obviously setting the truss rod, making the neck right. But it is all a balancing act. We are there are very very fine tolerances, and what we need to do is we need to set this up to its optimum performance. But uh, but we need to keep a low, as low an action as possible. So that's all it is. It is not major work to set up a guitar correctly when you know what you're doing. You should not have to drive. 85 miles to go and find a guitar tech that can set your guitar up properly because if there's a guitar tech out there and you can't set your guitar up properly you shouldn't be guitar teching that's all i say so i'm going to crack on with this uh, stay tuned come back soon and we'll see how we get on so real good news regarding the frets got a not straight edge on there altered the truss rod to make the neck absolutely straight or as straight as i can get it which that is i've been across with the fret rocker and there are one, two, three, only four frets with high spots. Good thing about that is you get four, you get five frets included in an intensive setup. Any more than four or five frets, any more, definitely any more than five frets, I would have been charging for a, a fret level with a setup, which would have been between one, 100 and 110 bands. This one here, listen. Really quite high, that one. Hope you can hear that. This one very high. This is why I've been getting some fretables down here before anyway. And that one's high. That explains why I've been getting fretables down this end. I might, and that one there. So you've got one, two, three, out of the first five frets, three of them are high. This will explain why I've been getting fretables down here. I might, in hindsight, put the, 60, the set of 60 strings back on and see if we can get away with it. Though I still do recommend a set of 1254s. What I might do is, I might, what I'd be better off doing is just putting a set of 1254s on, making sure we've got no fretboards anywhere, blah, 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 blah. And he'll be getting his set of 60s back anyway. If he wants to change up to 60s, he can try them himself. It's gonna save me time, because at the end of the day, time is the essence when I'm working. And it doesn't mean that I rush anything. I never rush anything. Every guitar, gets the care and attention it needs, no matter what it is, whether it's an ESP, 
a high or like a high end ESP or a Squire or an Epiphone or whatever. They all get the same level of care. So I'm going to crack on. I'm going to level these four frets. I'm going to reprofile, recrown them. I will be using basic tools for this job because they are, this is not major work. You know, if I was doing a complete fret level, it would be considered a bit more major. But I'm pretty sure I can just get away with a flat file. I use a flat side of this, even though it's a three-cornered file, which I could if I wanted to recrown that way. But I'm going to crown the frets just using my profiling file or known as a crowning file, this will put the arc back on the frets. When I level them, they're going to flatten. And I need to put that arc back, and this is the file to do that. If you see how it has that groove in there, and a thinner one there, and that will re-crown the fret. So, I'm going to crack on with that, shouldn't take me too long. Once that's done, I'll spray the fingerboard with some mineral oil, commonly known as lemon oil. Don't be mistaken, it's not lemon oil, it's mineral oil with a hint of lemon to make it smell nice. This mineral oil is specially formulated for ebony and rosewood fingerboards. It not only nourishes the wood, it also cleans. So we'll put a first coat on, that'll clean all the grime off, we'll rub all that off. We'll put another little coat on just so it soaks into the wood slightly and it will nourish the wood, stop it from getting dry, brittle and stop it cracking. I recommend you do this at least once a year, maybe twice a year, especially if you're a heavy player. Because all the crud builds up on here from your sweaty fingers, it's really, really not great for the wood. So I'm going to crack on with that, shouldn't take me too long. Once that's done, like I say, I'll treat the fingerboard and I will polish the frets using some steel wool. Once that's done, we'll glue everything to clean, we'll test the electrics. I'll put a switch tip back on, I found one in my parts drawer, so it's got a switch tip on there now. Once that's done, we'll get some strings on and we'll get it set up. Um, should be a pretty straightforward job, this one. I don't envisage there being any problems now, everything is checked. So, check back later and we'll see where we are. So, I've levelled the four frets in question, but what we find is, especially in this one, which was very high, once I get this to the level of this one, it will alter how this one works or how these two also work. And once I've removed enough material from this fret, which I've more or less flattened the top two millimetres of this fret now, it then alters how this works between these two, and this one then is shown to be high afterwards. So, this is why I only give five free frets maximum with an intensive setup, because once you get above five frets, I mean the thing is there's five, five, fret, five, five frets, so you're going to alter 12 frets around them to each side. So each fret really, if I do one fret and we're all separate, you could be altering all the frets. It, 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 it will alter the relationship with these. Next, say, for instance, I do fret three. If I take a lot of that, it's going to alter how these two react with this one and how these two react also with this one. And in this case, it's done exactly that. So I've not done five frets now. I've now done six because this one's this one's now high, which wasn't high before. And this is why I only include five frets with an intensive setup because once you get past five, forget it. You're going to have to do the lot. Because if I say I have one, two, three, four, five frets all across the fingerboard from one end to the other, and five frets are high, if I change all those five, it's going to alter the relationship between the two around each of those five frets. And that's the only way you're going to get a proper true uh, fret level is by doing the whole lot. It's why I differentiate between an intensive setup and a fret level with, a, with an intensive setup. So I have to charge more for it. And in this case, I could have just gone for a complete fret level, but it would have meant me taking a nut off and working an extra three hours. So just in this case, I'm going to do this one. And hopefully that everything else, all the ones around it, are going to be absolutely fine. And it's just a matter of taking my time, very gently, and feeling the curve of the radius. When you've been doing this job as long as I have, you get to feel when a fret is right or isn't. And you, know, you get to learn this curve. Listen, still there. So just in the center area now, and you get to learn, you feel the fret more than you were, uh, well, definitely more than you see it. And you get to feel the curve, and you get to know it. And there you go. And that fret is now level with that. This is now level. Got a little bit on this edge. So again, this one fret has altered the two around it, so I'm now doing my seventh fret 
always clean the file just a little just a couple of brush strokes just on this edge and that is now fixed so now this one fret here has altered two frets around it I've had to alter both of these frets next to it so now I have to crown all three so in effect I've not done four frets here I've done six and this is always the thing we're just going to remove these birds off the edge and we're going to reprofile the fret itself. This is not touching anything at the size, it's just working in the centre of the fret. It's not touching, definitely not touching the top. It is touching the sides, but not the top. Just giving that a gentle reprofile. Might need to go a little bit heavier on these edges. Always cleaning the file. So now what we'll do is we'll just clean up the area. We'll test it for frets again. Three areas, centre, far side, near side. Only ever testing three frets at a time. That's so why we have four different lengths on the fret rocker. Test three at a time. If we get a rock, we know the one in the middle is high. Turn again, use a shorter side here. And now we are cooking on gas. Look at this. Frets are now all level. So checking these just don't check the lot even though I've only altered six an intensive setup I'll give myself two and a half hours from start to finish probably a little bit longer maybe two and a half hours with Floyd Rose Tremolo maybe a little bit less sometimes on a guitar less now when you do fret work no it's going to be two and a half hours two and a half to three hours max I'd say on an intensive setup. On an intensive setup with me, you get everything, absolutely everything checked, and you get up to five frets leveled, recrowned. All the frets will be polished, the fingerboard will be treated, the nut slots will be checked and recut where need be. We'll set the radius on the bridge, we'll set the intonation, we'll set the pickle height, we will check the electrics, we'll test all of the tuners, test every nut and bolt and screw on there even at the back and we'll also test that the bridge is secured we'll test that the pickups are in right and we'll test uh, the strap pins make sure they're all all right everything will get a clean uh, where need be if we need to get any electrics done we'll give a, a squirter switch cleaner and maybe a drop of solder if we need to flow a little bit more solder in there so you are basically getting a strip and rebuild from the bottom up i will check the net neck for setting by checking the bolts at the back as well so everything is going to be done. That is an intensive setup. With a regular, what I call, what I call a player setup, <clears throat> you're going to get all of that except for you're not going to get any fret work done. You're not get, going to get any electrical work done. They will be checked, but they will not be done. If I need to work the frets or work the electrics, I will let you know and I'll say you need an intensive setup. And if you need a fret level, I'll tell you. I always do an appraisal video on a guitar and I always do a completed video when I've finished the work. It's something I've always done and it's something that I will always do. So now that's done, I'm going to spray the fingerboard with mineral oil, lemon oil, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to let this soak in and we are going to clean the fingerboard and once that's done we're going to polish the frets. So let us soak in 15-20 minutes. I'll move on to another guitar I've got on another bench. I could do a bit of fret polishing while I'm waiting for this to, to work. And once I've given this a clean, I'll come back, we'll get the frets polished, and then we can look at getting some strings back on. Uh, in the meantime, I can do other things like check the electrics, I'll have it plugged in, check the electrics, get all the dust off all of here, uh, clean the pickups, test all the tuners. So there's always something to do. So stay tuned, I'll be back with the uh, update shortly. So while I'm waiting for the um, mineral oil to do its magic on the fingerboard, I'm going to polish the frets. 
And when polishing frets, always cover the pickups, seal them, seal them right in using some Scotch 3M low tack tape. Yeah, I use a lot of this stuff, use it all the time. Both pickups, so everything's sealed in there, so we're not going to get any filings from the steel wall when we do the polish. I always use also a fret guard. It slips over the fret, so we're not going to dig into the wood, we're not going to scratch the wood, we're going to let the oil do its work. And I just take some steel wool, this is finest grade you can get steel wool, it's grade 0000, zero, zero, zero. and it is super fine. And all it is is a matter of polishing the frets, it's just a quick, it's a basic polish, all we're doing is getting off the grime over, if that's better to show you this end I believe, just put it over the fret, put it over the fret there. Blah blah blah, job done, and it's just a matter of just going across the fret and getting right in there into the corners. But we are not touching the fingerboard, so we're not removing anything from there. And that is it. And that is now polished. We've got all the grime off here, it looks fantastic. And I'm going to do the rest of the frets. This is what I've done two, I've got 22 to do. I will crack on with that once that's done. I'll give the fingerboard a wipe over, remove all the excess mineral oil, and this will be ready for new strings back briefly at this angle i've done all the work i said i would do tightened all the nuts bolts and screws on the tuners underneath on the top of the tuners and on the top of the headstock not reset the not reset the radius exactly on the bridge yet but what i'm doing i've restrung it fret spin polished fingerboard's been taken care of i've restrung it what i'm doing now is i'm setting the intonation and for the most part intonation is pretty okay Uh, but there is one out, and I always set the intonation when I've got new strings on anyway. That's good. For those of you who are saying that's not a tune, you're right, it's in drop, well it is a tune, but it's in drop B. You need to look at that nut slot there, because that, that's ringing a little bit. A bit sitarish, it means it's, it's but. Not so much pinching at all. I'll be as flat on the octave. That is also flat. I say the B, but it normally be a D to you, but it's actually tuned to B because it's a drop B. This would normally be a G, but it's tuned to E, and that's flat. Watch out. that. What is the B string, which is actually tuned to G sharp now? It's fine, and the low or the top E or the high E, which is now in a C sharp, is it's also fine. So these two strings are out, and they're both flat. One way I always remember which way to alter the saddle when we're flat is if we're flat, flat is four letters. So I go left as, as I'm looking at it from this angle. I go left. Flat means you move the saddle left. It means you move make the make these. Um, actual length shorter. If the note is sharp, you move to the right. Sharp as five letters, right as five letters. So both these notes, flat, perfect there. Flat on the octave. We need to move these two saddles that way. And I have a really good screwdriver for the dip set in the intonation screws. It's a really long one, which is fantastic. And I would guesstimate that where I'm gonna to need to go about that much for this one. And now we have the octave, we have it set perfectly for intonation. Flat. Same again. I will go about that much. And that's it, we have intonation set perfectly.
Intonation set, right, all I need to do now, set the radius on my saddles, set the string height above the 12th fret, and then check that I have enough relief in the neck. Um, once I'm happy I've got the right amount of relief, we can reset everything else, the action above the 12th fret, and the saddle shape, the radius on the saddles. It can be a long-winded affair, but once you get used to doing it, and you do it as many times as I do, it doesn't take you that long at all. I'm gonna crack on with that. Once it's done, we'll move the camera, and we'll show the guitar when it's ready. And here we are, all done. I've spent the best part of the last half hour just tweaking things here and there, getting the balance right between the relief in the neck, um, the saddle adjustment, the radius on the saddles, especially the height above the 12th fret of the strings, um, just tweaking it here and there. And I have put in a little bit more relief than I normally would on a standard tuned neck. Just a little bit more, still only, not a lot, half a millimetre, round about the 9th fret. A little bit more than I normally put in, but it just takes the uh, edge off where these strings vibrate and So we've got no string buds anywhere down here. Um, it partly to do with the string gauge. Not a lot of difference in string gauge, still nice fat strings, uh, but that 54, 1254 set makes all the difference for me. Um, so that is exactly what I recommend, it's what I've put on here. The guitar is beautiful. Don't forget that, no buzz. Really, really pleased with that. So that is another one done. I've had it plugged in, it sounds fantastic. I always make it though, the client's privilege to play his guitar once I've set it up. So I've not put that on the video. I will I will play this again. I'll plug it into my uh, Fender over here. I'll probably stick my uh, a nice grunge, uh, a Digitech grunge pedal. It's so brilliant with Digitech grunge. Digitech grunge pedal is the best metal pedal I've ever heard. I always used to use one and maybe stick something like a uh, Super, Drive, Super Overdrive SD1 in front or a Maxon 808 in front. Uh, with no drive, just using it as a clean boost. Absolutely fantastic sound. I'll even try it from my bass amp in a bit because it's got a good EQ on there. But anyway, this guitar has been, been a pleasure to work on this and I wish all jobs were like this. I say it's been a pleasure to work on it. I haven't put the uh, truss rod cover back on yet. I'm gonna do that now. Everything I mentioned that this guitar would have in its setup has been done. Uh, I've also cleaned inside the truss rod cover slot there, which was a bit uh, bit of dust in there. So everything's been cleaned. I have one more thing to do. I'm going to put this cover on, and I just have to check the um, strap pins for tightness. Just whiz this in there. How many times did I do videos and I forget to put these on? Right, there you go. And that is it. Now the guitar is finished. What a beautiful looking guitar, it's been cleaned. I've had the control plate off, checked all the electrics. Electrics in there are absolutely fine. It has two Alpha 500K parts, full size parts, might I add, and a regular standard three-way switch. Really simple wiring system. Everything's fine, there's no crackle on any of the parts. The saddles are now set to the 16 inch radius, absolutely perfectly. I have an action of just over one and a half millimeters above the first string, and the sixth string, the height, just on this one, everything else is radius how it should be except for the low E, which I have at exactly, it's just a Nats Nadja under two millimeters on the 12th fret. Now you show me where you can get an action that low and get it buzz free on a drop B. Well, any good tech should be able to do that. You shouldn't have to drive 85 mile to take it to a tech who can actually do the job. Everyone that uh, advertises themselves as a guitar tech or a luthier or whatever should be able to do this with no problem and get you a buzz free action. I don't know why they can't do it. You know, there are many, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what the word is. But, you know, 
obviously not all guitar takes are up to my standard. I don't think I'm particularly better than anyone else in the world. I just set myself very high standards from day one because I want you to have your guitar as I would have my own guitars. And I do have very high standards, I do know that, and some people call me picky. Well, if, if being picky means being perfect, then that's, that's absolutely fantastic. I'm all for getting a guitar as playable as possible. So, I'm pleased with this. I'm totally, absolutely pleased with this. Um, but this is a standard setup for me. I wish all jobs were like this, by the way. Three hours work, you know, uh, we just come in, we get, uh, they get three hours work and they go back out. Yeah, you know, I could do three of these a day. I'd be quite happy with that. You know, um, so there you go. So boys and girls, or fret friends, uh, as always, check the website, fretfriend.co.uk. Uh, especially check my Facebook page, because my Facebook page has all my details on there. It has my contact details, it has my rates, it has all my videos go on there. And the address is, or the URL is, facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. That is facebook.com forward slash ng one seven. So, fret friends, until next time, project done. We're going to move on to the next one. So, as always, be good to each other, and I'll see you again soon.